Hello everyone, Tina here. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thanks for joining me for Try It Out Tuesday. Today we're going to create a card, a fun card, using a stamp set from Stampendous. It's called Peking Pals and it is so cute. There's flamingos, meerkats, llamas, giraffes, and the oh so cute ostrich. If you guys are having a down and out day and want to smile, I encourage you guys to google the word um, ostrich and then click on the images because the images of these cute little ostriches will just make you smile. They're super cute. We're just going to stamp the ostrich for our card today. Today's card is going to be pretty simple and you can probably get away with using stuff that you have in your, um, in your stash to create the background, which is really nice. I'm just stamping the ostrich with my Memento Tuxedo Black ink on some Nina Classic Crest Solar White cardstock. And then we're going to do some real basic coloring. I want to keep my ostrich basically white, so we're just using two shades of gray. I'm using my C3 marker first, just doing a little shading. And then I want to intensify the shaded areas with my C4 marker. And then that's basically all the coloring on the llama, or I was going to say llama, on, on the ostrich that we're, to, <laughs> that we're going to do. I am going to um, go ahead and use my colorless blender and then blend out that gray so it's can't see the lines basically just just the shading I'm going to add blue to the eyes of my cute little ostrich and then for the beak I'm going to be using um, two E markers I have an E70 is the lightest here and do a little shading with my E74 and that's it that's my cute little ostrich with the big old eyes I just love the big eyes with the long eyelashes just Something about these guys make me smile. <laughs> okay, I'm going to use my scissors and fussy cut him out. Very easy to do. Um, I'm not worried about completely trimming the bottom because we're going to be doing some tucking with him. We're going to set him aside and work on our background. I'm going to use one of my double stitched rectangle dies and create a panel that measures four inches by five and a quarter. It's the largest one in this die set. Once it's die cut, I'm going to take my double stitch circle dies, the smallest one, Kind of using my little ostrich as a um, as a guide on where to place my little circle here. Um, I want to cut out a window in this panel, so I'll tape this down and run it through my die cut machine, and we have a circle window here. Now, after this is die cut, originally I was going to keep the inside piece and add color to that, um, but then changed my mind. I thought we'll just add color directly to our card base. But um, I wanted to make sure that I got the, the section behind my window. Um, so I'm just going to take a pencil and mark the inside. Line it up, make sure it's centered, and then draw a light, light circle on the inside. I got a little bit of um, pencil mark on my outside panel. And so I just used my eraser to remove the, um, the pencil mark. Okay, now I want to create a bunch of circles on this panel. Um, we're going to set our card base aside and grab our panel with the window in it. And this stencil here is from MFT. It's the basic shape circles. Now, sometimes I get stuff on um, a retirement cell and I'm not sure if this is available, but um, if it is, I'll link it below. But if it isn't, guys, just die cut some circles out of some scratch card stock or scratch paper that, or even bills if you <laughs> wanted to create your own stencil with your circles. Um, I thought it'd be fun to create a pattern just using the, with ink that's left over on my blending tools so um, usually they're pretty juicy and so I'm going to start off by using my pink blending tools I had I think it's worn lipstick and a picked raspberry I'm adding both of them to the circle picked raspberry just at the very top to create um, a dimensional effect so just shading a darker on one area of the circle will just cause it to look more like a bubble so that's what I did there I cleaned off my stencil and we're going to go with, uh, um, I'm trying to figure if I want a one size larger or one size smaller. And I think we're going to go with one size larger. I'm using post-it note tape to mask off the areas um, beyond my, my circle. This way I don't get it on my background panel. And I am overlapping it just slightly on the circle that I just colored in. This time we're going to be using, I believe this is Peacock Feathers. And then I'm going to do a little bit of shading. Um, with my Mermaid Lagoon, but I haven't used Mermaid Lagoon in a long time, so it was pretty dry. I'm going to go ahead and just grab my ink pad and um, add a little shading. And you can see the dimension that it adds. 
the the inks that I'm using are not distress inks, they're distress oxides. So these are basically my go-to inks. Um, and it's not very often I use my distress inks. In fact, I just have the mini cubes, but all my blending tools I use with um, my oxide inks. This next color, I believe, is dried marigold was the darkest color, and I think it was um, one of my shades of yellow. I just don't remember. But any kind of two tones you have would work great. I just kind of went with a variety of colors. I went on, um, ran out of colors on my first set, and um, these little containers are nail polish holders. I got them in Amazon, but they're super handy to hold your little blending brushes. I'm going to go ahead and finish off my little circles, just creating like a rainbow of colors. And um, for the main circle window background, I'm going to use um, a couple shades of purple. I have um, Wilted Violet. I'm not sure what shades of purple they are, but I know I need a darker one. And I think um, I'm going to need to bring in my Seedless Preserves to darken it up a little bit um, to give it that gradient. I think that really helps with um, the effect that this has. It kind of really, you can see the dimension versus just a flat color. And if you don't want to add the dimension with the two tones, you could um, distress it, add some water droplets to your panel, and I think that would just make it pop too. Okay, background's all done. Kind of a, a neat little circle pattern. I'm going to go ahead and lightly tack a little bit of adhesive behind my panel and tack it down to my card base. The purple um, circle was with the oxide ink was actually my card base. I don't think I mentioned that, but um, I lightly tacked it to my card base so we can stamp our sentiment. And I just want to make sure it was centered. The sentiment that I chose kind of goes with the llama. Actually, it goes with a few of the images in the stamp set, but it's, uh, it says, here's looking at you. <laughs> Super neat. And I thought we would stamp it on the purple circle and then heat emboss it with white embossing powder. So I'm using my Versamark ink. I did treat it with my anti-static powder tool. I think this is very important because the stress oxide inks um, stay wet longer. And if you don't treat it, you're going to have a hot mess. <laughs> okay, I got a little on the upper area. I'm just going to brush that off and use my heat gun and melt it. And it is good to go. Next, I added a little adhesive behind the bottom of my um, ostrich here and I tacked him down on the inside of the window. So his body is on the inside and his head is um, on the outside. Just did a little tucking and then I popped up my panel with foam adhesive and we taped that down back to our card base. I wanted my little ostrich to be peeking out a little bit more so I'm gonna add a couple pieces of foam um, behind his head so he's just a couple level, levels higher. Now, as I did this, I noticed it was something that was off with my pattern. So I'm bringing back in my stencil and I'm going to add um, some uh, twisted citron. It looks really close to the yellow that's behind my um, ostrich's head, but in real life you can see it's um, like a lime, limish green. But um, after I added that, I was happier with the, the pattern. But I am going to add a few... Um, iridescent bubbles. These are from Studio Katia and they have an iridescent hue and it'll pick up those colors and keep it nice and playful. And then that is my card for today. I think it turned out so fun. I think if I got this in the mail, it would make me smile. <laughs> but um, again, this is called the Peking Pals from Stampendous. And I forgot, I am going to add a little bit of my journey glaze over the beak of my ostrich hair just to give it a little extra little shine. But I thank you so much for joining me, guys. I wish you a lovely rest of the week. We'll see you again next week for another Try It Out Tuesday. Have a fabulous day. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>